Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my May wrap up part two. And what a month it's been. Um, I obviously hosted the Spoonies Reader Farm with the lovely Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf, which was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for everyone who joined in, for the people who did the bingo board, for the people who just shouted out, everyone that watched, everyone that joined in. Thank you so much for all your support. It meant a lot to me. The video where I put up about my stories um, was one of my most watched videos and you guys were so lovely and I can't thank you enough. And yeah, I read a lot more books this month. I read 36 books this month. 33 were off my unread TBR and that is different from last month. Let's have a look. Like, oh no, it's exactly the same number of books I read last month and exactly the same off my unread TBR. But I kind of bought 30, gained 32 books. Not all of them were bought. I did a few gifts um but i only unhauled one book of my unread tbr i think now that the numbers are going down i'm going to be unhauling a lot less unread tbr unread books because i've decided to be a bit more you know just not beat myself up i am still gonna if i don't like a book i'm gonna unhaul it i do need to do a try a chapter on some tudor books soon would you like me to do a video on that to try chapters on some of the tudor books that i've got because after the Tudor along, I'm kind of chewed it out a little bit and I've got quite a few books that are massive that I've had on my shelves for a long time, historical fiction, more like tudor -y kind of books. Do you think I should do a try chapter unhaul video, try a chapter video on it? Like Alice, does a, Alice did one on her thriller books, so I might do one on my historical fiction books and maybe do them a bit more genre specific. But let me know down below, I'd love to hear. So this is the statistic you guys want to hear. <coughs> my... May unread TBR was 344. My June unread TBR is 342. Now, I really did not expect that to go down by even one. But admittedly, I have kind of cheated and read a few shorter books. So I kind of cheated a little bit. But it's still gone down. That's still what I wanted it to be. Um, and it, I've gone from 360 at the end of my uh, the April TB, unread TBR down to 342. I think for me, if I can get it down to, at some point, I would like it down to like 300. That's pretty good. That's a lot better than it was like 500. But as you would have <coughs> well seen from a video I did recently on my library, my bookshelf tour library, I've now got this got the numbers down to like 50-50. So half of the books are read, half of them are unread. So my shelves are busy, but they're full of books that I've read and loved. So that's positive. So now to the genres. I read one poetry book, one fiction book, two thrillers, two non-fiction books, five classics, eight historical fiction, and 17 contemporaries. Now, that is very different from last month in the fact that last month I had um, more historical fiction than contemporaries. It was very much very but this time I've done a lot more other genres so I'm still quite happy with that I've, I've sort of made, read a mixture the thrillers I've read have been amazing but now to the starter ratings I had one unrated book you'll see that soon two two star books which I read in the first half both of which are classics I am really having a classic slump two three star books four three and a half star books eleven four star books seven four and a half star books and nine five star books so yes they're all most of them have been four and above stars but you can tell where a lot of the where that was a lot of those four stars are contemporaries because for me to get a contemporary a five star they've got to be out of the range i am gonna just to give you a bit of a forward planning on videos i am doing a I'm going to do an original tag this month on how do we rate our books because that really is something that has definitely changed in me now and I thought I want to do a bit of a chatty video I thought I'd also let you know I'm going to be having what videos some of the videos you've got coming up in June I'm ranking my page two and ones although god that's gonna be hard I've got a tag video and I've got a tag video and I've got another tag video but this is the one that I've been tagged in so some good videos some standard ones I have realised at some point I'm going to have to put an extra video in because I'm waiting for the announcement of Jane Austen July because I will not finish off 
my shelves without Jane Austen July. My um, my July TBR is there waiting to find out what the Jane Austen July tech, um, prompts are. So that's something I'm looking forward to. So let's get on with the book. I do not want this video to be ridiculously long because even though I've read loads of books, I've got kids to learn. I've still got the kids around. I'm waiting to get interrupted now like that. So here we go. Um, first book is unrated. Unread. I didn't rate this one because it's a Kathy Glass, and although I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. Enjoy is the wrong word. I don't think it's one of her best books. It's one of her earlier books, and there isn't so much about. Um, this is more to me. This was quite good about the fact it tackled postnatal depression and postnatal psychosis, which would have. This is why this counted for the May mental health. Um, Read along that Marilyn from Marilyn Meyer and Dozer and Kim from Middle of the Bookmarks read um, the hosting, and that is what they tackled. And it's got some shorter stories about Daryl Sampson and Hayley, but Hayley's hardly even mentioned. Daryl and Sampson are in it quite a bit. These are two of the foster children she fostered. This was all right, and it did tackle postnatal depression and postnatal psychosis very well, but it wasn't like one of my favourite Kathy Glass. So it's unhauled. Then I read a Tudor book, Jean Played It, it was one of my last books to read, and this is Catherine the Virgin Widow, and it was about Catherine of Arrogant. And to me, this was three stars, but it wasn't the best because it wasn't so much about Catherine, it was more about her family and about the situation at court and a few other things. It was all right, but not as good as I wanted it to be. Now to my three and a half stars. I do not know if I've rated this right. I rated Burnaby Rudge three and a half stars because it's such a big book that I don't know how much of this I absorbed. I read all of this in a month and I regret doing it that way. I've discovered I cannot read pay, um, but his Dickens books over a short period of time. I think for future reference, when they go on my um, Dickens books goes on my TBRs, I need to not have a specific time that they've got to be read by. I want to go with the flow with them. I think... Going forward, that's what I'm going to do because I tried to read this in like 100 and 125 pages slots each day and that was too much. Yet if I read too little, that doesn't feel enough. I need to go and really think of a way of getting these Dickens books into me because I love Nicholas Nickleby, but I don't know how much of this I liked. Um, Katie from Books and Things has done a great... She just finished that and she loved Barnaby Rudge. And Barnaby Rudge as a character was good and I found his storyline was quite fascinating. But there were so many other people, and this was their, uh, his Charles Dickens historical fiction book, and it was set in the 1780s, so that before the Victorian times. And it's about the riots that were interwoven. I think the riots I did absorb, and there were some characters in this I thought were quite good. It was a good book, but it just didn't, and it was better than Martin Chuzzlewit, but it didn't grab me as much as I wanted it to. Now, the next two are contemporaries. And they're three and a half stars. Like I said, when I do my video, we'll go into a bit more about the star ratings for them. But I read a, I really needed a light summer book after reading some harder hitting books. And I wanted, because it was really nice weather this week, although it's grey, a bit grey at the moment. It's supposed to be brighter later. Filming this on the 31st. I really wanted a summer book. And this is Summer of Love by Katie Ford. And this is a book that was gifted to me by Baz Books. And it was a really good cosy contemporary it's about sean bishop who lives the hustle leaves the hustle and bustle of london life and throws herself into life in the country and i love the country aspects i love the planting i love the romance that was in this i love the way she is with the, her son i just thought it was really good and it's really good cosy contemporary so definitely i'm, I'm definitely going to pick up her books i don't think i'll pay full price for them but i will pick them up from the charity shops because they are nice cosy fun summer read or like i'm hoping she has some seasonal books but that's definitely and then i read a book that's been on my shelf for ages and this is wild oats by veronica henry again veronica henry is a very cosy contemporary the storylines are not this is not one that sort of stayed in my head for very long um it's one of her older books i think it's like one of her like yeah this is jamie wilding's return home is not going to plan a lot has changed in the picturesque Shropshire village of Upper Farrell since she left after the death of her mother. Her father is broke and behaving like a teenager. Her best friend's marriage is slowly falling apart. And the man she lost her heart to years ago is trying to buy her beloved home. 
I believe this is actually set before a series of other books and I can't remember which ones they are but it is quite good it is a cozy contemporary summary book if you want light light cheesy this is a pretty much cheese fest I would say that and some of love are cheese fests so Gem from Gemma books you would hate them but a lot of other people if you like contemporaries it's cheesy now to four stars like I said I will be talking about more about how I rate the four stars these are not books that I'm necessarily going to keep but they were books that I really enjoyed and there were bits of them that really grabbed me so the, literally the book I finished this morning was What Katie Did at School by Susan M. Coolidge. I love them What Katie books, um, What Katie Did books, because they are really, they're very historical fiction. They're, to me, they're children's classics and I loved reading them growing up and I loved going back to this. And Katie's the eldest of quite a few children. This is, I think, the second or third book in the series and she goes, gets sent off to boarding school with one of her sisters, Clover, and this is quite a fun very Victor very historical fiction, very set in the past books. But Katie's very like prim and everything else and she relaxes a bit more when she goes to school with Clover and I thought that was lovely, so nice cozy contemporary. Rachel Horre, The Gathering Storm. This is dual timelines. And this was okay again, this is very atypical of the the author's writing. I think it was very much reminded me of the last book that I read by her, The Love Child. So these are good historical fictions. If you like time dual timelines, if you like this one had a bit of a mystery element to it, and it was quite good. I like the way the timelines flow very well together. This is when Lucy's troubled father Tom passes away. She travels to Cornwall to visit his childhood home, the once beautiful Caroline Manor. Before he died, Tom had been researching an uncle she never knew he had. Um, determined to find out why, Lucy tracks down Beatrice Ashton, a local woman who seems to know more than she can tell. And then in the past time, you know, Beatrice plays with the children of Caroline Manor, a pretty beautiful, pretty blonde Ange Angelina Win Winkington. Then one summer of the eight, at the age of 14, she falls in love with the young visitor to the town, Rafe. And it's very wartimey, very historical fiction. It's got quite a nice mystery line and the timelines do work well. Very nice four stars. But to our charity shop it goes. Now this one I picked because it, I thought the cover Right, summary book. Nice short one because I wanted the short ones to try and get my unread TBR down. I do this sometimes. It's actually a Christmas book. Didn't realise Christmas in June, in May. Oops. And this is about again. It's, this is a beachside villa place. It's a beachside setting, but it's set in the winter. And after a tough breakup, Ellie returns to the only place she has ever felt at home, the coastal town of Sanderson Bay. A year later, she's living the dream, brewing artisan teas and selling them in a cafe. And then a mysterious brooding Ben walks into the tea room and she dares the drink love. This actually does tackle um, some invisible disabilities actually in this. And that's related to one of the characters that are affected by, G by Ellie. And this does talk about really hard hitting issues in some ways, but it's also very good. And I really enjoyed this. I thought this was really, really good. It does also talk about um, depression. But I'm not going to tell you who that is because that would give you a spoiler. But yeah, so it does actually count for both readathons, but it is not a summer book. It's a Christmas book. So that's what I'm going to go and tell my boss when I go back to work. Books. Then a book I thought was for the readathon. I thought this was going to have some disability rep, but it didn't. But it's Imogen Clark's book, but um, impossible to forget. I read one of her books because I got sent it for a tandem read along. And this was actually written at the time of COVID, apparently. And I thought, the stuff that was written at the back of that would get related to that was quite good. And this, again, this actually has different timelines. Um, and at the age, we start off the book and it's a character has died. One of the lead characters has died. And she basically puts four of her friends as guardians to her 18-year-old daughter, Romany. Now, Romany's like, why have you given me guardians? You know, I'm 18. I'm about to, she's in her last year of school. But there are reasons behind it. And then you've got all of their histories, how they're all connected to this lady who's the unread, the sort of effectively narrator, the Angie, and it's really quite good actually. I really did enjoy this. It was not as hard hitting as I thought it was, but it is a very good book. I would definitely pick up more of Image and Clark's books. They are they are good and they're nice contemporaries, but this is very emotional. Very much got me tearful. So for four stars of that show shop. Baz books are gonna love me because I've got loads of charity. And then this is a book I picked up on holiday last year, so I wanted to read it before I go back to um, Bogner, which I'm going at the end of July. 
and um, this is a tiny piece of us and this is about basically you've got a about a, the start of this we've got a person who um a, a character dies at the start of this and what happens then is they they have they their mum gives permission to their, their organs to be donated and this story is about where these organs have gone to who the lives they've saved and how all those people connect and this is really really good really good but again very heartbreaking and Vivi Palmer has always lived carefully she was born with a heart defect and then her second chance of life comes from that donor but the donor's mum Grace is a bit she was a bit creepy and a bit weird because she wants to find the pieces of the heart and there were some scenes in this that did make me go a bit icky when she's like trying to get listen to the heart of her son that was in this other lady's body that was a bit icky so it's good but yeah that, that bit was a bit icky so there you go then a book that I got sent by the by Tandem for one of their romance reads on. So it was just four stars. It was a good four stars. But I felt that I should be honest. And rather than rate it five, like I, sometimes I, yeah, I'm a bit naughty. Sometimes I do that because I do feel like I should. But this was four stars. It was very much of a, Amer it's an American author and it's set in America. And it's very much of a racy romance, friends to lovers trope. My reviews on Goodreads and it's on Amazon and it's on do does. Instagram. Um, so you'll read about what I thought about it then. But this was Friends to Lovers trope and it was done really well. A bit of romance, a bit of Friends to Lovers, a bit saucy but not too much saucy. Good fun book, really good. I recommend you, I do recommend this. For those of you that fancy a bit of saucy romances, I'm definitely going to pick up this author's work because if I want something fun, that's what I'm going to go for. But again, it's, it's tackling stuff in here that I didn't realise it would tackle and I thought that was quite good. So yeah. I'm going to keep that, but I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Because I can't, can't give away. You can't, I can't take, I don't know what to do about this, guys. If you've got any advice, I don't know what to do about books that I get sent by the by Tandem or publishers or whatever else. I feel like I've got to, you're not allowed to sell them in charity shops, technically. Not. I know that with the um, proof, you're not allowed to sell them in charity shops. But what can you, what can you do with the books that you don't want? Is there any one of you that want me to gift this to you? Because I'm allowed to gift the products. So if there's any of you that want this, please let me know down below. And the first person to ask will get it. But please let me know because I apparently you're allowed to gift them, but you're not allowed to sell them. I don't know if that means you're not allowed to sell it in the charity shop. I don't know the rules. Can someone let me know, please? But yeah, I'll put that to one side. Because I'm not going to read it again, I don't think. Well, that's why I normally keep books. And then to my last four stars, a good... Old Lucy Diamond, anything can happen. I got this in a charity shop, even though it's quite a newish release. And then a chance encounter in New York City, a great love story at the cusp of the beginning, and then he was gone. For Laura and her daughter Eliza, it's just been the two of them. But when Eliza turns 18 and wants to reconnect with her father, Laura is forced to admit a secret that she's been keeping from her daughter the whole life. This is a good book. It's a good romance. It's a good father-daughter Although all about that, and it does tackle again some de depressions and stuff like that. But it is a good book, and it's about like when your life takes some curveballs, what do you do with it? So quite a good book, quite a good romance. But still four stars. Now two four and a half stars. Um, these were books that were good, brilliant. Some of them I'm keeping, some of them I'm not. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six books here, and yeah. Some of them are keeping, some of them are not. But they were very, very good. Like I said, I will talk more about that at the start. First one is the one I read for the readathon in. The fact it was for Disability Visibility. I am keeping this. It is a freaking amazing book. It was really, if you want ones, a book about disability, if you want to hear what disability is like for different people, this is one I thoroughly recommend. I would like to know if there is a book like this for the UK. Please let me know. I need to read more disability fiction books that are set in the UK just to find out if there is... I, I'm part of a lot of online groups on Facebook for people like myself that are Spoonies and I've got disabilities. But I really would love to know if there are any other charities or anything that I can look up to get. As my disabilities are becoming more prominent, and certainly the chronic pain's becoming more aware. I'd love to know if there's more out there, more books about there and more books I can share and spread awareness. Because this was fantastic for the readathon and it's one that I thoroughly recommend. But there wasn't all of the stories that were connected to me. That's why I think some of them weren't necessarily connected to me. But that's just my personal thing. But it is a fantastic good book. And for I think for all of you that live in America, 
buy this book you'll you will get a lot out of it and for the uk people who, if you're prepared to pay a bit more for it it's worth it it has a lot of short stories a lot of first person narratives about disability definitely recommend then one that i technically read for misery may because that was another read that was running God, may was bloody busy and this was a pocket full of stars the word stars came up for the prompt of misery may and this place is magic but it's not the sort of magic that comes from wands and spells Sapphire and her mum rarely see eye to eye, but when her mum falls ill, something mysterious happens and Saf finds herself transported back in time to her mum's childhood. This is heartbreaking, really good. I think I will give it to the charity shop because I want other people to read this. It does, again, tackle relationships with parents. It tackles history and what, how it makes us. It's got a bit of magical realism. Really good middle grade book. And this is the one that I'm not sure if it should be four stars or four and a half because I did, this is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I read this with Gemma who was previously read a book, Gem, and I thought it was really good, but God, did it have twists. It was my first thriller book by this person and I did not expect the twist at the end, but then at the same breath, some of the twist at the end didn't kind of like get me as much. I don't know. I really felt torn. I didn't like all the twists at the end. I thought some of them were a bit like unrealistic, but it was very good thriller, not too gory, although gory at places. Very good thriller, very good mystery thriller, and the one I definitely enjoyed, but I'm still not sure if it should have been four or four and a half stars. I need to know how to change the ratings on the apps, but that was a really good book. That is definitely charity shop. Then a book that surprised me. I think Thomas or myself picked it up because I wanted a night gain, I wanted a really summary kind of book. And I am, I was really hit and miss because Emily Henry, I bought this book from a charity shop last year or this year. And I didn't like Beach Read by Emily Henry. I took that on holiday, thought it was okay, didn't love it. And I've now got um, Book Lover by Emily Henry on my shelves. And I, and some, it's, they've all had very mixed reviews. Naomi didn't like this, but she liked Beach Read. I didn't like Beach Read very much, but I bloody love this. This was really good. In fact, it's so good. I'm so tempted to keep it because it was just, it had, it's again the friends to love a trope. No, I will give that to charity shop. I'm going to, this is going to be one of those ones that I give to charity shop and end up buying back again, isn't it? But this is friends to love us trope. Love that. Backwards and forwards from the past to the future timeline, but it did it really well. I didn't get lost at any point. It's about like, it starts, you got, the present, and you got 12 summers ago, Poppy and Alex meet. They hate each other and are pretty confident they never meet again. A year later, they're forced to share a ride home, and then they start a plan that every year they'll go on one vacation together. And it's really good, really good, fun contemporary. Really, really enjoyed it. The Friends Lover trope was done really well. It tackled some other things that I didn't expect. It was a really good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it, way more than I thought I would. Then to a book that broke my heart in Shredded It to Pieces. My sister Charlie from Charlie Book Reads said it would. This is How the Long One on Sister Swept Sweeps Her House. And this was the up for the Women's Prize, shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2021. So that was two years ago. And I can see why. The reason why I got four and a half stars was because How the One on Sister Sweeps Her House is only briefly mentioned right at the start of the book. And then it's a book set in Barbados. So it could really, I think it could count for Caribathon. So any of you that want this for Caribathon, let me know. So yeah, that's another one I'll keep for if anyone lets me know. This is set in Baxter's Beach. It's more of a, it says it's historical fiction, but it's more of a thrillery kind of historical fiction. But you've got two timelines. Um, you've got Lola's grandmother, Wilma, shares the story of her one-armed sister, a cautionary tale about what happens to girls who disobey their mothers. But that really isn't part of it. It's more about domestic violence it does tackle child abuse. It does tackle some really hard... And abuse, really domestic abuse is so prominent in this. You, re I read this so quickly, but bloody hell, it ripped me to shreds. It was so heart-hitting, so emotional. It's so powerful. It's a very, very good book. But yeah, watch out, actually. It's very powerful. And then to a book that I was gifted by one of the people, by one of my guys at Baz Books. It was a Lucid Jewel thriller. I picked this up because Danny from Danny's Book World had talked about reading the Lisa Jewel thrillers massive but I read it in like two days the night she disappeared a Lisa Jewel thriller and it is not gory which is what I liked 
but it's very mysterious very keeps you on the edge of the feet very much you can't put down and again you've got dual timelines but they're only like from about a year to a year and to the future and again it's about a late girl and her partner who disappear and there is way more to it than you meet the eye i got the ending i liked i really did get a good ending but bloody hell did it have me on the edge of my seat it was a really good thriller i love this author's thrillers they are my kind of thrillers Ruth Ware is very hit and miss. Lucy Jewell seems to, every time she gets the thriller, they get into my head in a way that nothing else can. I can't read them again. I won't read them again. That's why I won't pay full price for them. But bloody hell did this have me on the edge of my seat. I really, really liked it. The charity shop's going to get that. God, I've got loads to take back to the charity shop next week. Now, in the second half, I only had three, three five stars. One of them was a reread. Um, so... I don't know how I did this. Last time I had more five stars in the second half. I don't know how next month's going to go in June. I know that I'm already starting the book today. I'm starting my June books a day early today. And I'm already starting with books that I could well be five stars. So I need to get better at leaving some five stars for the second half. Books I expect to be five stars. I don't know how that's going to go. I really don't. Especially because June is really like... It's my last month of freedom before the kids break up in July. So... First one was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I'm not going to ask you to pick a favourite, um, although there is one favourite from this half and one favourite from the second half. Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Tali here, but I know this is really hit and miss. I know a lot of people don't like it because of the saucy bits in it. A lot of people don't... If you don't like saucy, sexy stuff, then this probably won't be for you. But I found that when I didn't so much focus on the sexy stuff, which I liked more the first time, the second time I read this, I focused more on the, on the fact that Chloe has fibro and has chronic pain and I myself is a chronic pain sufferer and I found certain bits of this were described I read way more into that this time it's a book that I'm going to read over and over again because it is the first book that made me feel seen on my chronic pain and it gets that some days I think for me I think I read this at a time when I was having a chronic flare, pain and chronic fatigue flare and boy these people got me I wish I know my videos spread awareness and I know that's helped people get awareness of what chronic fatigue is like. But I have to explain to my colleagues, to my friends, to everybody. When I am, ha even my partner, Chris, we've been together nearly 19 years. He struggles when I get a flare that is so bad that all I want to do is sleep. There was a day last week I got home from work and I literally, I was in more pain than I've felt in a while. It was just a flare. It, it went within a few, within about a week or so. But I got home at 3 o'clock that day. I got home at 3.30. I sat down at 4 o'clock and I barely moved between 4 and 9.30. I was that wiped. I could literally barely move off the chair. That is how bad chronic pain and chronic fatigue can be. And this book really explains that. How the, the next day I walked to the park and I was dead between which by a walk to the park. And that never does that. This is why that book is good and it really does help spread awareness. But you need to get past the saucy stuff. Because if you focus on that, unless you like saucy stuff. But yeah, it's one of my favourite books. So that's a keepy. Then to a book that I read because I added it onto my TBR for the month. Because the John Milton book for the prompt of classic um, book, a classic with a um, disability rep. And this is because, and then there were none. And this is an Agatha Christie that is, I didn't realise at the time that it was a standalone, but it is a standalone. And it is because Agatha Christie had numerical dyslexia. I really can never remember the name of that. But this is flipping amazeballs. It is my... I've only read two Agatha Christie's and this is my third. This is my second. And it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. It's about like 10 strangers are invited to Solder Island, an isolated rock off Devon coast. Cut off from the mainland with their generous host mysteriously absent. They're all accused of a terrible crime. And then one by one, the party dies. Oh my God, this slow start. When it got me, it got me. And I read this, blew through this. Flipping amazing. And this video is way too long. And then the last five star is The Marriage Portrait Mo 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 It is shortlisted for the Women's Prize. If this doesn't win, I'll be shocked. Although I know Demon Cophead is the one that everyone likes. And this is set in the 1561... Lucrenza, Duchess of Ferraria, is taken on an unexpected visit to a country villa by her husband, Alfonso. As they sit down to dinner in the icy hall, um, it occurs to Lucrenza that Alfonso has the sinister 
purpose in bringing her here. He intends to kill her. And God, this is ripping, scary, mysterious, amazing. I, it was one of Maggie Hostel's best books. Charlie from Charles Heathcote got this for me. And it is a beautiful, beautiful book. And it was five stars all the way. I really enjoyed it. Thoroughly loved it. Thought it was amazing. So, of course, that's getting kept. So, I'm putting it on my shelf. Now, briefly, because I don't, this video is very long, I will say my favourite book for the month, for definite, for the readathon and for a lot of other things, is that it was um, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden. Katie's one of our booktubers. Link her channel down below. If you've not bought a book, why not? If you like historical fiction, if you like dark books, if you like books with disability rep, it has everything. Katie, I'm going to send her a message today. She has written the best book of the year. Uh, if another book beats that as my best book of the year, I don't know. That was my favourite book. That was one of my favourite books. And the second favourite is Agatha Christie and then there were none. This is because of, I've got read this because of Naomi and Alice. I'll link Alice's channel down below because Alice is a massive Agatha Christie fan, as is Naomi. Another favourite of the month. I can't stop loving this. I can't stop thinking about it. It's amazing. If you like Agatha Christie and you want to start with the best book, start with this. I can't wait to read more of Agatha Christie's books. But yes, those are the books that I've read this month. I'd love to know. And um, I'd love to know what your favourite book of the month ago has been. Um, what else did I say at the start of this? Let me know about what you guys want me to do about the, what I, I, what I can do about the tandem books. I'd love to know. Um, would you like a video on my try chapter for like the historically fiction, like Tudory kind of books, that kind of era books? Let me know down below. And lastly, let me know what your favourite book of the month has been. I'd love to know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, not subscribe yet. Bring on our ding -a -ling. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.